Hey guys, and welcome back to HR Talks with Leash, a platform aiming to motivate, inspire, and elevate HR interns, professionals, students, and graduates, helping you to flourish within your careers. If you're new here, then welcome to the HR Talks with Leash community. Please can you like, comment, subscribe, and click that notification bell so that you're always notified every single time I post a video. And without further ado, let's get into today's video. So in today's video, I'm actually going to discuss and talk you through a week in the life as a HR student studying her master's degree. Now, I did graduate from Aston University in 2020. I was there for a year from 2019 to 2020. And at the start of my degree, I never in a million years thought I would do a YouTube channel. So unfortunately, I don't have any footage of when I was actually at Aston, fully in uni, doing uni things. I don't have that footage and then when I did start my channel I was still at uni but I was doing uni from home and when I started the channel I wasn't thinking about doing no day in the life week in the life because I just wasn't ready for that yet so I'm so sorry but the next best thing that I can do for you is just take you through what a week in the life kind of looked like for me so I can go through the lectures how I um, manage my time seminars how i looked after myself so my health and my well-being just to give you a bit of an idea of what it's kind of like and how it might feel for you so sorry that there's no visuals but this is the best i can do i was able to get a distinction grade in my degree and i hope that this information that i provide to you in this video can help you to understand what a week may typically look like if you would like to see a breakdown of the different modules that I actually studied whilst at Aston University, then please look at these videos that have just appeared on your screen right now. And they will literally take you through a comprehensive overview of what the different modules look like and just the different details about coursework and um, exams. Whilst I was studying at Aston, I had lectures about four times a week. And on some days I'd have maybe two lectures in a day other days I'd have one. Now I actually thought when I decided to do a master's that I wouldn't be in so much. I thought I'd only be in like two days a week but you know um, that's just how it was. But when I did have lectures usually at the start of the week the lectures would be spread out so I would have like one lecture in the morning and I'd have a lecture in the afternoon and I didn't live on campus so instead of going home after any lecture I didn't see a point so I would usually stay on campus and either go to the library to do some independent study and then I would go to my next lecture afterwards because that just made sense to me but obviously if you live on campus you could go back to your place if you wanted to and do whatever you need to do so if you wanted to do that extra studying you could do that on campus in your accommodation it really just depends but yeah lectures were very spread out I would say um, on the days where I just had one lecture I would probably go home afterwards but there'll be times when I'd say to myself you know what I'll concentrate more in the library so I would stay in the library and just do independent work but when it comes to lectures I would say that in my lectures there were there was one lecture that I never took notes in and that lecture was employment law because I didn't see the need to take notes in employment law because at Aston anyway there was a book that my lecturer actually wrote um, which had all of the different modules that we were studying in the book so realistically everything she was saying on the slides and stuff was already in the book so there was actually no need for me to be writing notes and wasting time so in employment law I think for me personally it was really good for me to just listen to what she was saying because I'm able I'm a person where if I'm listening to exactly what you're saying I can take that in and if the notes are already written in a book I can just go and refer to the notes in the book it just makes more sense to me and when she asked questions as well because I would say that the lectures were quite interactive at points she'd ask questions about different cases and stuff and you know I'd be able to answer them because like I was just listening to exactly what she was saying anyway and referencing back to the book when I needed to so for me focusing on that lecture and because she was such a good teacher as well that helped also because I understood what she was saying that made me understand the module more obviously if you need to write notes write notes I'm not saying like disregard notes because some people learn better that way some people like to take bits of what the lecturer is saying because it might not necessarily be in the book specifically it might be you know something that you need to kind of know about but 
it really depends on um, your learning style and how you take things. So that that's employment law anyway. All the other lectures, I actually did take notes. So what I did was I printed off the slides and I wrote around the slides. And But there were some lectures as well where I literally just typed up a Word document and um, was just taking notes as they were talking. I never took notes based on the slides because the slides are already accessible to you. So I personally don't see any point of writing what's on the slides. And that's a that's something I learned from undergrad because when I first started uni, I used to write what was on the slides. I was like, hold on a minute. I can, the slides, I can reference those. I can go back and see them anyway. So if you are writing notes, I'd say the best thing for you to do is write what the lecturer is saying, because obviously that's deeper and more information and knowledge that you um, would potentially need to maybe understand what's written on the lecture slide so yeah two ways of taking notes there either print off the the slides and just write around them and annotate them or if you prefer to write them on a word document then write what the lecturer is saying up on a word document and you can you know refer back to those notes when you need to so another thing that i did within lectures is i always made sure that i asked questions if i didn't get something or at the end of the lecture i would actually go up to the lecturer and like you know ask a question if i didn't want to ask it in front of everybody because i think getting clarity on things is what's going to help you to be you know one step ahead because sometimes we don't actually understand what's being said specifically so if we ask that question we get clarity on it then it's just easier for us to get the concept asking questions i think is something that you should definitely be doing and not being afraid of when i was an undergrad and i was doing my psychology degree i hardly asked questions in first and second year in third year that's when i started to ask more questions and i started to engage more with the lecturers and stuff and that's actually where i saw an increase in my marks and the same thing happened with um my master's degree i managed to get a distinction grade in my master's degree and i honestly think it's just the way that i interacted with the lecturers it's the way i answer, ask questions and just the way that i was trying to focus more on specifically what they wanted from me in terms of coursework and examinations so definitely ask questions so in terms of what i did like in between lectures and stuff like that at uni i was a person who if we had a lecture and we had like coursework to do we had we got set a deadline or something like that I'd be in the library I wasn't I kind of lived in the library actually I was in the library quite a lot so after lectures I would go there with my friends and we would study um for me personally I like to study with my friends because I made some great friends on my degree and obviously because we were all on the same course and stuff we could help each other with the different courseworks and exam prep and stuff that we need to do so that was a great thing for me to do I just love going with my friends and like you know we're not always working sometimes we're chilling we're chatting and stuff and just socializing so that was nice um but yeah I used the time in between lectures to make sure that I just kind of understood okay what needs doing this week where what can I do this week to make sure that I get to this deadline or that deadline um so I think it's really important to you know study with your friends but also have that independent study time as well so there was times where I just went to the library by myself and I would um you know choose a a quiet area so in um Aston they've actually got like I think they've got quiet floors can't remember they might do but they have a postgraduate study room so I would always go to the postgraduate study room that wasn't always quiet to be fair but you know most of the postgrads were in there so I just thought let me go there and it was just a bit more comfortable in there for me personally um and I concentrate really well when I listen to gospel music when I listen to gospel music and I'm either like um I'm trying to write an essay or I'm trying to get some exam prep done gospel music is something that is my go-to so that's just like a recommendation like for anyone it just for me makes me feel calm and it just gives me like the energy to keep going and stuff so that's what I listened to a lot when I was studying I would also use this time wisely to like plan how you're going to do your coursework so that's what I used to do especially like on the first week when we was getting like all of the info on what the different courseworks were and stuff I'd make sure that I've listed all these down or I've got them recorded somewhere so I know exactly when the deadlines are and with Aston a lot of the deadlines were very close together like they were all in like the same week for the first term so obviously you've got to spread out how you're going to make sure that you finish everything so that you're not rushing last minute not gonna lie 
I'm a last minute person like I've actually accepted that now but I'm turning into somebody like currently in my life anyway that tries to do things beforehand but I've always been last minute and when I was at uni I was kind of last minute but I was still able to make sure that you know I got everything done in the deadline time so I'll just make sure that you know try and make a deadline for yourself instead of waiting for the deadline to come for what uni set you maybe say okay I'm going to finish um, employment law by this date I'm going to finish employee relations by this date so I have enough time to work on organizational psychology or do you know what I mean like just make sure that you split it out and manage your time that's something that I wish I did a bit better but you know I still got a good grade out of it so you know I must have done something right but yeah um definitely recommend using those hours in between lectures to study if you can not only did I have lectures I also had seminars which went with the lectures so for every module that we did I think we had a seminar there was few modules that I don't think had a seminar attached to them but some of them did so um sometimes I would have seminars based on what the lecture was about so we'd have to do the reading that they told us to do from the lecture to make sure that we would understand the contents of the seminar if that makes sense um so that's a, why a lot of the time I was in the library as well so I was making sure that I was preparing for the seminars some seminars did not benefit me I don't think others did benefit me so for example strategy change in leadership because first of all I like the lecturer and second of all the way that the lecturer interacted with us made the seminars fun because a lot of the time seminars are you have to read like a pdf document that they told you to read and then you just have to answer the questions that the lecturer puts on the board but with the seminar that I had for strategy change and leadership it was really really good sometimes because we didn't just ask and answer questions my lecturer basically got this program up where we all had to sign into it and then like kind of write our answers on there and then when you write your answers and then you submit it then it would go up on like the main board so then everyone could like compare answers like that way so it was more of an interactive way of answering the questions that he set um, and sharing ideas with other groups as well so you know sometimes you might come across seminars like that which are fun and you know um well funner than other seminars um, and will benefit you as well in terms of like the lecture content that you have and also in terms of your coursework so yeah had quite a few seminars within the week I would say that on a busy day you'd have like a lecture and then sometimes you'd have a seminar straight after then you'd have a break and then you might have another lecture um, at the end of the day so yeah it kind of varied quite a bit um, but there was like sessions as well on Saturdays. Now, I don't know if Aston still do that, but we had to go in on Saturday to do like workshops and stuff, which counted to the portfolios that we had to do, which counted to getting the CIPD accreditation. So you might have to do like extra tasks. I'm not sure if that's for all universities. I can only talk on Aston um, on Saturdays where you have to do extra work for your portfolios. Um, but yeah those sessions that we had um that they were some weeks were long let's just say sometimes we was in uni four days a week and then we had to come in on saturday as well and i had work on saturdays too so i'd have to go to uni from eight to like four and then go straight to work so yeah sometimes it was it was hard um but this is what a typical week kind of looked like sometimes i wouldn't say we went in saturdays every week it was like probably once a month or once every couple months so the careers we had a professional development um like class which we had every other wednesday sometimes it wasn't like every week we did have like professional development classes for careers too some of them was optional so sometimes you didn't even have to go to all of them you could choose which ones you go to depending on what you're interested in but on those cl um, classes as well the mandatory ones that you had to go to they kind of gave you loads of career advice and tips in terms of trying to find jobs cv advice applying for graduate schemes all of that stuff aston does all of it um i found some of the sessions really good I didn't find others so good because some of the professional development sessions focused on areas that I wasn't trying to develop in or go into because with professional development there's just so many areas so you know um but I think 
that if you choose the ones that are right and beneficial for you, then it should benefit you in the long run. Also, the careers would send us emails every single week. So I'm always checking my emails to see what grad roles are coming through, what internship roles are coming through while I'm studying my degree and when I could book a session with my careers consultant as well. So I did book sessions with my careers consultant. I booked one like at the start of the year so I could go through my CV and my careers consultant helped me with how to structure my CV properly, what I needed to add into it what experience I needed to go out and get to make my CV better as well. So it gave me um, options on like what societies even to join or like what's going on in Aston, what can I join to get involved in to get specific experience. Literally, the careers at Aston will change the game. But let me, yeah, that, that's careers for you. And I definitely think that it's something you should integrate into your week. So another thing that I take into consideration um, across my week is my health. So I actually started to go gym a lot more when I started university and going to the gym actually just gave me life like it just revitalized me and it just was able to ha help me to be more attentive um in lessons and classes because i feel like when you keep the body healthy you keep the mind right then you know you're on track to basically doing the best that you can because your body's in the best shape that it can be so i also tried to like drink a lot of water stay hydrated number one make sure we stay hydrated um and i also like drank smoothies as well like um, strawberry and banana smoothies like if you see any of my vlogs that i've done i still do these strawberry and banana smoothies because they've just got so many nutrients in them and stuff so just looking after yourself um because if you look after yourself then it's just going to help you to progress in your degree in the long run also time management i've got so many videos now on time management but let me just mention it quickly um, I always try to jot everything down in like a planner or diary so if I had any deadlines or anything I made sure that they were all in my diary planner if anyone said to me oh Alicia do you know um when the coursework's due oh yeah the coursework's due on this date oh do you know how many words the coursework is yeah the coursework's 3,000 words I knew everything because I was writing it down and making sure it was there with me so I was always referring back to it um, and I'd also say as well module specification I mentioned this in one of my last videos but ensure that you're referring to the module specification because it's got all the objectives and details that you need in order to do the best on those courseworks or um, exams. I also like to write my top three stuff down at the start of the day, like so what are the main three things that I need to get done. So finally, guys, I think the last thing that I want to mention is that in this degree, you need to believe in yourself. Before I started my degree, I wrote down that I was going to get a first class honours, so a distinction grade in this degree. And I prayed literally every day. I just feel that prayer actually helped me to get through it. I didn't do it on my own. So I really do think that you should believe in your source, believe in yourself, and also go by God's strength as well in this degree, because it is difficult. I'm not even gonna lie. But if you believe that you're able to do it, you will be able to accomplish great things. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I know it wasn't like a vlog style video, but at least I'm able to tell you what my week in the life was like. Please can you like, comment and subscribe and I will see you in my next video.